Turn to Psalm 139. And you can follow with me up on the screen. Um, By the way, I want to say this again. Um, We've got good people here at this church. And I mean that. Uh, God has blessed us. And just the dedication of the people who come here every day and work. Um, The people who have stood by this church. And all the things we've gone through, the men that are on our board, men that I trust, I appreciate all of them. And um, when Michael goes to Kenya, um, I think this trip he lost how many pounds? About 20 pounds he lost. And, um, I, and a lot of it is nerves, just what he has to deal with out there. Um, because, you know, it's a, it's a love-hate relationship. There's a lot of people that love us. Don't get me wrong, or we wouldn't be out there. Um, if, if, if I didn't think that we were doing any good, even Jesus, there was a certain place the Bible says Jesus left because he could do no miracles there because they're unbelief. He just, he just walked away from them. Paul, at some point, Quit preaching to his own people. And he said, I'll never go to another synagogue as long as I live. I'll go preach to the Gentiles. And after a while, you just, you just realize you can't go no further. And you just God has you do something else. Well, with what is being done out there, um, you know, it all falls into what God has given to this church. It is... Bethel Church. It's not Mike Hoggard's church. It is Bethel Church. It is Bethel Media Services. It's Bethel International Church Ministry. It's Bethel Church. It is us. Together, working together. Whether you're just praying for it. Or you gave a dollar. Either way, God uses both of that. And um, so I appreciate Michael. Appreciate everybody that uh, loves this church, supports this church. And... Um, For those of you who pray, you know, you pray that God will save somebody. And here's seven women that within the next hundred years, you're going to get to meet them. Okay? Guaranteed within the next hundred years. Unless God does the Methuselah thing all over again with us. Now, let me tell you about Lisa. Um, I did a little study... Up there on the screen, the adult human body contains over 60,000 billion cells. 60,000 billion. That ends up, let me see, that's hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions, 60 quadrillion cells. And what they are, every cell in your body is like a little, like a little stone that makes up like a brick house. Okay, think of a brick house or a stone house. And a, a house is not made of one thing. It's made of a lot of things that work together. There's a message there. All the parts have to be working together. First uh, Peter chapter 2, verse 5, You also as lively stones. And notice he said lively stones. He calls Jesus right before that the living stone. That's where the name Livingston comes from. The living stone. He is the rock. The stone cut out without hands. He is alive. And we are alive. And in fact, DNA is, a, is exactly that. It is a stone because it is a crystal in its formation. It's a rock. Our DNA is God's word written in stone. Amen? Okay, so we are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Uh, let's go, Lord, in prayer. And you pray for me this morning so I get all this out. It's, it's just me talking this morning. Uh, I've just we've been through so much and I know so so many other families have, too. And I'm not taking away from that. And um, so I'm just kind of gathering together what's been in my heart. Heavenly Father. 
Lord, I ask for your help this morning. Uh, Lord, this is your church. It's your body. It's your body. It's not mine. But you've, you've drawn us in together. You've, used, you've asked us to come and be part of your house. And Father, help us in that. You are the, you are the mansion builder. And you have gone to prepare a place for us that we can live with you forever. And Father, while we dwell down here, there are many things against us. Many things against us. So Father, we are here but by your grace. And we thank you for that grace and that mercy. Father, we pray, Lord, that you'd bless families this morning. Husbands and wives together, single moms, just bless families, bless children, bless our church family that's both here, all places around America, Canada, they're listening in Kenya now. I just pray, Heavenly Father, that we as your brothers and sisters together, Lord, would be an honorable a house. You are the builder who deserves more glory than the building. And Father, we just thank you for building us together, using us for, for, that, for that purpose, to be your dwelling place, to be part of your body. And I pray, dear God, that you would, uh, Lord, just collect my thoughts this morning, help me as I teach, and share some of the things, God, that you've helped me with in the last few months. Lord, it is, it's been a blessing. It has. And I thank you for it. Father, I pray that you'd help my wife continue to bless her and heal her, restore her. Any others, Lord, who go through this, my heart goes out to them. And I pray, dear God, Lord, that you would just draw us together in love, help us to love one another, understand one another better as we go through our own trials. We ask you, Father, to help us now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Romans chapter 12. Uh, you can turn there. There's Romans 12, beautiful, beautiful chapter. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12 sort of mirrors that because it talks about the members of the body and how one member of the body is not more important than the other. Nobody here is more useful than anybody else. God uses us all in a unique and a different way. He's fashioned us differently. He's made us a little bit differently. Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, they, they say very close to the same thing. Romans 12, verse 4, for we as, as we have many members in one body... And all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. What that means is the little toe is connected to my ear. Not directly. But wherever my ear goes, my little toe's going with it. Unless my little toe gets chopped off by the kitchen table. Oh, I hate that. But we are all connected together. God's made us a little bit unique, a little bit different than one another. But he's the one that's made us that way. You don't like how God did it? Tell God about it, but accept it. It was by his grace that he did it. He made you the way he made you for a reason. So that he could be glorified in you. He's the mansion builder. He's the one putting us together. 1 Corinthians 12, I'm, we're not going to get into that, but I'm looking at it now, and he's using the application of spiritual gifts. One person has a gift, another person has another gift. This person's got a little bit more grace. This person's got a little bit more faith. This person reads a little bit more than the other one does. This person talks a little bit more than the other one does. It doesn't matter who's who. It's not a contest about who's getting there first. According to the Bible, it's a split second between the dead in Christ first and then us. So let's not split that hair. But anyway, here's 
Psalm 139. Let me just tell you what happened to Lisa. Ten years ago, they removed a lump. And they told her that she had what they referred to as precancerous cells. And they said, what that means is your body's telling us we know how to make cancer. Okay? And I'm going to explain a little bit about cancer and what I found out and what I know from the Bible it is and so on. And um, so they put her on a medicine. For, it, it, it's only for a, a course. A couple of years, she took it for the course. And every six months, and I mean every six months, back getting a mammogram, getting a whatever, getting it looked at, getting examined, making sure everything's okay. She'd been doing this every six months, and I told her, I said, I'll, go, I'll be there with you every time, because it's nerve-wracking. I've watched her go to the doctor every six months. She'll go, and I'll, when she comes out, I'll say, how'd it go? I never know. They never tell you anything, and she's got to sit for three or four days wondering if she's got cancer. Well, it was always no, no, everything's fine, everything's fine, everything's fine. Six months ago, everything was fine. And then several weeks ago, boom, we found something. It scared her, scared the girls, scared me. And it, it put me in a really low place. Very low. You know, you, you wake up to this, I've preached this for years. What are you going to do when they tell you you've got cancer? How are, you, how, are, how are you going to react to that? And are you still going to trust in God? Well, I'm here to tell you, when you get to that place, you'll realize you don't have a choice. Your life then is not yours. Because now there is something that is actively there that will kill you. Cancer kills everybody if it's not dealt with. Okay, some slowly than others, but it will kill you. So now there's something where they're telling her, you have something that will kill you if we don't, if we don't deal with this. So the doctor she had, great doctor, she sat us down and walked us through it. Here's what you have. We've got to find out if it's gone to the lymph nodes. And I'm going to talk about that, hopefully today. But I want to teach you a little bit about how cancer spreads. And you're going, to, you're going to hear something that's going to help you in your life. But, so they told us, we won't know until we get in the operating room. And, you know, Lisa has said, and I've went along with this. If I ever get cancer, I'm having it all taken out. I don't blame you. Okay? And there is a biblical theme about, and I preached this last Sunday, about coming out of Babylon. Some things you've got to separate from, even if it's a member of your own body. Jesus said, if thy right hand offend thee, it is better for you to go through life maimed than have two hands end up in hellfire. And so what if you, what if you ended up with leprosy in your hand? Or you ended up with an infection in your hand or your foot? You're going to lose your life. It's better to lose the foot than lose the life. Okay? And so that's what we do. And that's the choice that she made. And I support it. And it's, I mean, it's still got her down. She's very weak and in a lot of pain, especially toward the end of the day. But she's getting there. But our, our biggest thing was... Okay, now the surgery's over. Now we've taken... And, they, and when they got into the surgery, they got into the lymph nodes here. And they said, we're looking at them. We don't see that it's there. It's called metastasizing. It's hard to say it. Metastasis. Metastasis. That's when cancer's in one place and it rolls out, takes over another. That's the danger. So they said it hasn't gone there yet. So, but all the research Lisa did, and here's the glory moment here in a second. All the research Lisa did was, she
she is what's referred to as a triple negative with female breast cancer. And that usually means chemo, chemotherapy. And the reconstruction doctor told her, he said, I won't even touch you until you find out if you're going to have chemo. Because if you're going to have chemo, you need to spend time dealing with chemo. Because chemo kills cancer, but kills good cells. It's the risk. Some people say, chemo's bad. Of course chemo's bad. It kills cancer. It's a mean thing because it does have some side effects, but it kills cancer. Okay? So, and it, uh, until Jesus comes, because I know what's coming down the road, and I don't want that one. That's what really got me scared, John, was this whole thing about DNA changing. That was, that's been working on me. Am I going to lose my wife because I refuse to allow science to play God with her? I'll let God play God with her. But that's not an easy thing to say. Because that's your wife. And it's just like saying to part of your body, I have to, I have to cut it off. So... The reconstruction doctor told her that you, you're dealing six, uh, three months in chemo, just getting through it and getting over it. And he said, then, you're talking about January, February for reconstruction. So last Thursday, man, we're nervous. So we go into this cancer center up at St. John's Mercy Hospital. And walking in that place, that's a rough place because you see people in different stages and you tell some people are not doing well and that bothers you That's human compassion you see the shape the condition that they're in and you're just going man what a place well the doctor came in the cancer doctor and um, she rolled through, you know, triple negative. Usually we say chemo. And she's, so I'm taking notes for Lisa. And I'm writing down chemo. I mean, I'm just going, no. And she said, but in your case, because of the size of the tumor, it's not worth the risk. And I, I said, what? She said, the size of the tumor, 1.6 millimeters who's got an ink pen no just hold just hold it up there Sandy and stick the tip of it out the tip of an ink pen the ball at the end of an ink pen was how big her cancer was and I said oh, how did they it's a miracle they found it I couldn't believe it. You know, you think cancer lump, you're going. The tip of a pen. But a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. And leaven is like cancer in the Bible. It consumes and destroys and replaces. Good for bad. That's what cancer and that's what leaven does. And I did, I said, and the doctor said she was fortunate. I said, she was blessed. Doctor moves on. Even at a Catholic hospital, they don't all believe. And that's the glory of it was she, they said, with it not moving into lymph nodes, and it's not, and it's for no bigger than what it was, it's not worth the risk. She's going to be okay. Yeah. Now, let me show you something real quick, okay? Psalm 139, you know this is the place in the Bible where it describes DNA, what it does, how it works. Psalm 139, verse 16, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. In fact, you know, I want to go back to verse 14. Look at verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You did not happen. You were made. God made. I'm telling you, you were made to be how God made you. As ugly or pretty as you are, 
as tall or short as you are, as thin or fat as you are, as mouthy or quiet as you are, as stupid or smart as you are, it, whoever you are, God made you to be who you are. He did it so he can be glory. He glories in his creation. This is what, this is God saying, I made this. We're supposed to come in today and say, this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So David said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You can just see David, he's sitting out just thinking about his body, looking at his body. And he said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. How is it? Look at what I can do. Dogs can't do that. And he's writing and he's going, humans can write. Fish can't write. I can write. And he's thinking about all this. Then he says, by the Holy Ghost, 3,000 years before we knew what DNA was. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And that's who you are. God wrote you deliberately flawed. Am I right? What makes a penny worth a million dollars? No. Imperfection. When the mint makes a mistake, and that mistake gets rolled out of the mint accidentally, that penny's worth a million dollars, because there's not another one like it in the world. You're flawed for a reason. You have cracks in your system so God can fill the cracks. Amen? In thy book, say it with me, in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Now, I'm not going to explain this much, but it says that God made you out of a book that he wrote. And that book is called deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. And what we know now about DNA and about cancer, cancer is DNA gone bad. DNA is a book that God wrote where all of your fingers, your hair, your lymphatic system, your blood, your vessels, the collagen in your body, the mucus in your nose, boogers. See, I thought the kids would laugh at that. All these kids are going... Really? And Sandy's up here going, he said boogers. <laughs> hey, I know some of you boys. Boogers can be good every now and then, can't they? Oh, don't tell me. God made a book. See, here, the, what, what, what controls my body is the DNA in me. The functions of DNA working in me right now, not purposely. I'm not making myself think, stand, breathe, look, sweat. I'm not making any of that. The book is doing all of that. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? It is God's Word that does what God's Word does in a church, in a life, in a family, in the world. It is God's Word that does that. Now, the devil, here's where the devil comes in. The devil's cancer. Who, who says amen to that? Amen. Now, this is, from the, this is from Wikipedia. Cancer occurs after a single cell in a tissue is progressively genetically damaged to produce cells with uncontrolled proliferation. This uncontrolled proliferation by mitosis produces primary heterogenic tumor. The cells which constitute the tumor eventually undergo metaplasia, followed by dysplasia and anaplasia, resulting in a malignant phenotype. Who understands that so far? The malignancy allows for invasion into circulation followed by invasion to a second site for tumorogenesis. Let me show you what it really, let me show you what this means. Cancer is a consuming lie. I'm going to explain that. There's a couple ways cancer happens, but think of it like this. Everybody in, this, everybody in this building is using the exact same Bible. Right? King James. And it is out of this same Bible, I can say, turn to such and such, and you turn to it, and what I read is exactly what you're seeing on the page. And it's been that way for hundreds of years, thousands of years. This is what makes us who we are. This is what does in us when we 
when we lead somebody to Jesus, we do it by way of the Word of God. We give them Bible verses. We take them down the Romans road of salvation, Milton, and we tell them, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God, the wage of sin of death, give God eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord for God. And we give them these Bible verses, and it's those particular Bible verses that draw them to salvation. They ask for Jesus to come in their heart. God saves them. And then God starts sowing more of His Word into their life, building them into a Christian, into what we are now, believers. We believe this book, and this book is what has made us. Okay, so here's the devil watching all these people getting saved and he's going, I got to put a stop to that. I'm going to see the devil's tried to destroy the body. Christ is the body. So he comes in Genesis three by giving something else other than what God said. That's cancer. When the DNA from one from me. goes to somebody else and, the, and I give people a bunch of verses out of the Bible and then they take out their NIV, that's cancer. Because the NIV does not say what this book says. They're not the same. When the DNA does not get written out right to the new cell, that new cell now is dangerous. Because instead of that cell producing the proteins and the things necessary to continue my life, now it's producing death because, because it's not written outright. Man, I ought to preach this. I don't, can you all stay for a couple hours because I really want to... Did you know that your cells are written to die? You're not getting any taller. Right? Hey Amen. You know what I'm talking about. You're not growing. Okay? I've known him since he was this tall. Why? Because it's planned out by your DNA that after your cells do their job for a while, it's called apoptosis. It's programmed death. Those cells have to die. That's a whole nother sermon. Jesus said, except a grain of wheat fall into the ground and die. And he's talking about how, how we get to heaven. How are we going to get to heaven? Got to die. We all got to die. So because I'm net getting continually get, to get bigger and bigger and bigger, it's because it's written into every one of my cells that at a certain point we die. But those cells have already reproduced Hundreds of thousands of others to replace it. How did we get here today if it wasn't for those who came before us with the same DNA, the same Bible? It's been handed down. Come on, if you come on, get up and shout, wave a hanky like them old ladies used to do in the old days. That's, so, what happens with cancer though, because it's not written right, you listen to this. It shuts off programmed death. Cancer cells normally don't die. And that is part of the problem. That's why they cut into somebody and they see that their liver has been completely overrun with cancer cells. That's because those cancer cells didn't die. They just stacked on and they consumed the good liver tissue so that the liver doesn't work anymore. You know what man's trying to do right now? Stop death. And death is written into all of us. It is appointed unto man to die. And after this, the judgment. You understanding what I'm seeing, what I've been what I've been reading? It's like leaven. Matthew 16, 16. Then said Jesus unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. What was he talking about? Galatians 5, 9, a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. Matthew 16, 12. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of the bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. A continuing lie. Now, watch this. Now, I'm a consuming, continuing lie. Turn to um, Matthew 
Turn to Isaiah 26. And I'm going to get there in a second. Isaiah 26. Okay? Multiple times in the Bible we're told to be not deceived, be not deceived, be not deceived, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. That's cancer. 2 Timothy 2. The one place in the Bible where the word cancer is actually listed. It's called canker. But the word canker, a canker sore, is a, it's a cancer, a consuming sore. And the word canker means to eat. A canker worm is those inchworm caterpillars that come in the spring and fall that when they climb up the trees, they lay their eggs and then they go up and eat all the leaves. And they turn into moths and fly away. And God talked about the canker worms in the Old Testament. And in one place in the Old Testament, He talked about the canker worms increase. Cancer always increases, never decreases. That cancer, when cancer cells don't die, they just keep living and they keep spreading and there's cancer everywhere in this country. Am I right? Cancer is everywhere in this country. Now, one cigarette will not give you cancer. One cigarette will not give you cancer. But how many people smoke for years? And then all of a sudden, lung cancer, throat cancer. It's known that cigarettes cause cancer. It's known that. One won't do it. One lie coming to you may not hurt you. But here's the point. Uh, 2 Timothy 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's your responsibility. Study the word of God. Study the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Go to church every day at your house. Uh, but shun and profane vain and vain, vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. See that word increase? That's what cancer does. And their word will eat as doth a canker. The word canker means eat, and that's why they call it cancer, because it consumes. This 1.6 millimeter tumor that my wife had Left untreated would have taken her life. It was an aggressive cancer, meaning that it was, had they not caught it at the time that they caught it, it would have been much worse on her. That's the grace of God. Not that she never got cancer, it's that she got it and God allowed him to intervene at the right time. God always shows up. Their word will eat as doth the canker. Now you listen to me. The lies come in multiple ways. Here's a man out shopping or going someplace. He sees a woman. Woman kind of gives him a look. Look away. One look, that happens. Start looking back. And the woman lets it be known you know that guy that guy Billy at work yeah I like him well he's married I don't care I'll go after him he's a married honest man and he's got a woman tempting him may not bother him too much the first couple times she keeps working on him she's a cancer Cancers are consuming lies of any type. This applies to your body, your physical body, a family body, a church body, or a body politic like our neighborhood. This is why I don't want a drug house in our neighborhood. I don't. I was happy when the smokehouse shut down. Somebody bought them out, opened it back up again. So now we got a bar and a, and a dope house within a block. I don't like it. It's a cancer in our community. Drugs are a cancer in our communities. They're full of lies. Oh, this will make you feel good. Yeah, but wait till you come down. For the thousandth time. It's not so fun then, is it? No, it's not. So, a body politic like a community, a state, or this country. This country is full of cancer. As in anybody, there are good and bad 
healthy and unhealthy bodies, functional and dysfunctional. If there's a dysfunctional family, you know what you do? Stay away from them. I mean, be friendly to sinners. But if there's a family and all they do is bad things, don't go over there. Because one cigarette won't kill you. One drink won't destroy you. But it's all the ones that follow that, that will. You know, even they said even drinking hot tea too long. Scalding hot tea or coffee. Do you know what happens? You know what I found out? It's not the tea and the coffee that causes cancer. But when you scald your throat repeatedly, you're forcing it to have to renew itself more often than it normally would. The more often these cells are dividing and making new cells, the more likely they are for something to go wrong. And that's what happens. There's different ways it happens, but the result is death. Now, up here on the screen, I'm going to get my pen out here. Metastasis is when cancer spreads. Here you have a tumor. And you have all these tumor cells. These are cancer cells where the DNA is bad. The DNA is poison. It's making poison and it's not dying. It releases an enzyme to break down the wall that separates the tumor from the rest of the body. Here's the, here's the blood vessel over here. They say when it gets in the blood, you're dead. They're not joking. Because what happens is that, can't, for some reason, that cancer is programmed to kill, take over. That's all it does, is consume and take over. It's like it's written that way on purpose. Well, I think it is. I think the devil knows exactly what he's doing. So, through repeated, through a repeated barrage on the wall of your blood vessel, maybe one, maybe one cell won't make it. But as it continues to beat and to pound into this one area of your, of your blood vessel, once it gets in the blood, that's when it will kill you. That's, here's the wall that separates the tumor from the rest of the body. Here's the wall that separates the blood vessel from the cancer. Walls are necessary. Isaiah 26. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah, for we have a strong city. This, your body is a city. It's a multitude of people living together in the same house, right? And they all got to get along. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and boar walks. Walls sep are meant to separate the good from the bad. You have a wall around your body called skin. It is the largest organ of your body. And when there is a break in the skin, there is danger. An open wound will kill a person. Because then the invaders come in. And the invaders are always out there looking for a way to come in. Isaiah 60, verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy border. Borders are necessary. Hey, Mr. President, build the wall. It's not that I don't want anybody coming in. But if you don't come in the right way, you ain't here for the right reason. That's nature. Nature teaches us that. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation. By the way, the word walls is mentioned 66 times in the King James Bible. This is our shield. This is our barrier. This is our wall. This is what protects us. What built the skin in your body? DNA. What built the wall around the tumor? DNA. It was a separating wall between the good and the bad. Even the even New Jerusalem has walls around it, and it says, For without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. 
God keeps the bad out and the good in. Okay? Now, can't, I call this cancer by, by vexation. Isaiah 7, 6. Is that where I told you to turn? What did I tell you? I wasn't being... Anyway, turn to Isaiah 7. Let me tell you what vexation is. Isaiah 7, 6. Let us go up against Judah and vex it. Let us make a breach therein for us. A breach is a hole in the wall. And set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tebiel. A king is an evil ruler. That's cancer. It's what's bad coming in on the inside, taking over and taking control. And the way, the means to get inside is by vexation. And I'm going to tell you what it is. Bear with me. 2 Peter 2 verse 7, delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Where did Lot live? Sodom. It was full of sodomites. And he was vexed by it. He had to watch that filth every day of his life. Did it destroy part of his family? His two sons-in-laws that were engaged to his daughters, they wouldn't leave. His wife turned around, she died. It took its effect. Cancer killed Lot's family. The vexation is what killed it. It's not, like I said, it's not one cigarette that kills you. It's you smoking two, three packs a day every day for 40 years. That's what kills you. It's not one drink that gives you cirrhosis of the liver. It's you filling your body with the poison of alcohol that will kill you. It's not one lie that zips across your Facebook page. It's the repeated lies over and over and over again. That's what gets us. Judges 10, 8. In that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel. They pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed until they got their way in your life. How many guys do you know lost their wife to adultery? How many wives do you know that lost their husbands to adultery? How many families do you know that's been broken up by alcohol? Families that have been busted up because of drugs, heroin, methamphetamine, marijuana, marijuana. They're legalizing it. They're saying it's okay. It's not. It's poison. It's cancer. All these puffer deaths, THC in most of them, almost every one of them, THC. See, they don't want to tell that. They want to promote marijuana use like it's some miracle cure. Are you kidding me? It's the vexation that causes the cancer to spread. Because it keeps chipping away at the wall. The wall is your will. Judges 16. Turn there with me. Judges 16. I'm going to keep you for a couple minutes. How did Delilah finally get to Samson? Was it first try? Did it work first time? You may not have, you may not have taken the first cigarette offered to you. I'm preaching against cigarettes, ain't I? I ain't done that in a long time. I don't think cigarette sucking is necessarily a sin, but it'll kill you. It'll kill you. Just like methamphetamine does. Just like anything bad for us. Too much of it. When you eat too much fast food, you're going to kill yourself. Okay? I'm not, you, you know I'm not Mr. Health Food Guy, but I'm telling you, there's just some things that just ain't good for you. And they'll kill you. 
So here's Delilah now. Delilah's, she's got a mouthful of cancer. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words. Look at what your Bible's telling you. Pressed him daily. This is, you know what this is? This is you listening to Christian talk radio every day, listening to Joyce Myers every day. She's a witch. She's a witch. Full of rebellion. Her mouth is full of, she's the strange woman in the book of Proverbs. Her mouth is full of poison. Well, I listen to her every now and then. She's got some good things to say every now and then. Did you hear yourself? You know what you just said? She has good things to say and bad things to say. And she presses people daily with her words and urges them so that his soul was vexed unto death. And I have written up here, death by a thousand paper cuts. What does that mean? One little slice at a time. Amnon. I'm telling you about all the people in the Bible that were vexed. Amnon. Whenever, I want you guys listening to me. Amnon was a guy looking at his adolescent teenage sister. Amnon was a man looking at a young maiden. And he kept looking. And he kept looking. And he kept looking. Don't tell me that pornography is healthy. It's cancer. Pure cancer. So, we apparently just... Did I hear this right? Somewhere they just recently won the court case in this country, in certain places, for 11-year-old girls to go around topless? Yes. Did I hear that right? Are you kidding me? Do you know how many girls have been raped in this country because older men preyed on them? We are stupid! That's cancer. Amnon kept looking at his younger sister and was vexed till he fell sick for her. But he thought it hard for him to do anything to her. He, he had a wall there of consciousness keeping him from it, Wayne. Until a friend of his got involved and told him how he could get her. The cancer got its way in, guys. You want to go to prison? You want to ruin your family? You want to ruin your children? Your testimony? You want to be on a list? It's hard stuff. But I'm telling you, that cancer scared me. It scared me. My wife will tell you, I was in a bad place. I said, honey, I'm scared to death. I'm scared to death. I don't want to lose you. And when you get there, you might start waking up. God will start working on you, building some walls, fortifying some areas in life. I'm saying that to everybody. But that's, that's how it works. 
God did vex them with all adversity. How many of you get to a place where it all just piles on certain days? I was like that Tuesday. I mean, I was a mess Tuesday. God said the inhabitants of the land would be a vexation to them. How long will you vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? This is what I'm teaching you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pull back now. I'm watching my wife and she's hurting. So for her sake, I'm going to let you go. But this is what I learned. And it's like leaven. Leaven is cancer. They, they operate pretty much the same way. They, just, they devour and destroy what's good. I even got into the part about how cancer tumors start building their own blood cells. You know what that does? Or their own blood vessels. They're stealing life from the rest of your body. That's another sermon. But I'm telling you, God put walls of protection around you for a reason. You know what one of them is called in the Bible? Being sober. God built a wall around your brain called being sober that keeps you from making stupid mistakes. When you get high or drunk, high on anything or drunk, you'll do something stupid. That's the wall being tore down. So now you're not going to do right. It'll happen in a church. It'll happen in your body. It'll happen in your mind, your soul. It'll happen in your family. And it's happening in our nation. And the next sermon may be how God cuts it off. Some things are necessary to protect the rest of the body. Amen? Amen? Let's bow our heads. You know, I just realized it's a lot cooler down here than it is up there. I might start... <laughs> Listen, I love you. I love me first. I love me. I don't want to go to hell... I don't want to lose my marriage. I don't want to lose my family. I don't want to lose my life, my ministry. And the cancers that surround us as men are everywhere, guys. They are everywhere. False ideas, false doctrines, false teachings of any kind are cancer. Anything that is not sound doctrine from the King James Bible is potential cancer. And those walls where God has you separated from other people or other families or other communities. I mean, we don't want to turn Jefferson County into North Korea. Those walls of separation need to stay in place and we've got enemies everywhere wanting to tear them down. You think about that. Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, for my wife. And Father, we've asked you, Lord, to just let us die the same day. Because neither one of us want to leave or be left. And I thank you for that, God. I thank you for a marriage that's like that. It is the best gift that a man could ever have from heaven. It's to have his wife as his best friend. And oh, how the devil has tried to breach the wall. And I pray for her, and I pray for her health. I pray for her emotions. 
what she feels, how she feels. What she has yet to go through. And I pray, Father, that what you would do in her overall would be better than what she had to begin with. And Father, I'm saying that about her life. Because that's what you do for us. You destroy a little so you can make it better than it ever was. And Father, this is what I pray for every family here. Father, I've watched the cancer come into families all over this church. Trying to destroy and tear people apart. And it's awful, God. It's awful what that cancer has done. And Father, I see this church and how the cancer, Lord, has just tried to destroy from multitudes of places. I see this nation, God. Father, this nation is eat up with cancer. It's bad. Is there any hope? Father, I pray, dear God, that you would direct your word into each and every heart and life. Every man. Start with us men. Work your way down to our wives. Then work it into our children. Help us, Father, work it into our children. Bless us, Father. Help us, dear God. Keep the walls standing. Dismiss us now in your care. We love you. We thank you, Lord, for visiting with us today. We pray this in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, amen. amen. If you stand up, you can go.